המילים של השיר הבא לקוחות מתהילים ל"ד. טעמו וראו כי טוב אדוני. בואו נשאיר את זה ביחד, זה שיר חדש. טעמו וראו כי טוב אדוני אלי. אדוני אלי תמו וראו כי טוב אדוני אלי תמו וראו כי טוב אדוני אלי עוד הפעם, תמו, תמו, וראו כי טוב אדוני בבוקר הזה אנחנו מודים לך אדון, ישוע, שאנחנו יכולנו לטעום ולדעת את הקרבה שלך ואת הטוב שלך אבא. תודה לך על חסדך, על אהבתך אדון. אין כמוך אדוני, אין כמוך אלוהים. אנחנו מעללים אותך כאן אדון, הבוקר הזה, בוא נשריץ ביחד. אלוהי, אני אודה לך לנצח 
נצח כל ימי חיינו נודה לאדון אלוהיי, אני אודה לך לנצח. בואו נתחיל להודות לו בתוך הלב שלנו. תודה לך אבא על אהבתך. על הסבלנות שלך כלפיי וכלפינו אדון.
גדולים. גדולים ונפלאים מעשיך אדוני, אלוהי צבאות, צדק ואמת רחך אלוהים, מלך הגוי. גדולים ונפלאים מעשיך אדוני, אלוהי צבאות, צדק ואמת כי אתה, כי אתה נעמדך כל הגויים, אין כל הגויים יבואו, נשתחוו לפניך, כי נגלו אדוני אלוהים, משפצית כך, אין כל הגויים, אין כל הגויים יבואו, נשתחוו לפניך. כי אתה, כי אתה כי אתה, כי אתה 
אנשים, מי אתה? מי אתה? מי אתה? אשר היה מבראשים, מי דומה לך? כל הבריאה מחכה בכיסופי, מה שמך, מה שם בינך. בוא נשאיר את זה עוד הפעם, מי אתה? מי אתה, מי אתה, אשר היה מבראשי, מי דומה לך? כל הבריאה מחכה בכיסופי, מה שמך, מה שם בינך. מבראשית עם האלוהים הכל נהיה על ידך בך היו חיים ועוד לבני אדם צלצל ואמת בוא נכריז הרי הכל הרי הכל ממך כל דרכך והכל אליך הבוקר הזה בתור הכרזה הרי הכל הרי הכל ממך 
כל דרכך והכל אליך. הגיבור של הסיפוש, הדמות המרכזית, העולם סובב סביבך, לא סביבי, אהיה המרכז. לך יש את החבר. המרכזית, העולם סובב סביבך, לא סביבי, אהיה המרכז. לך יש את החבר, אלוהים בורא עולם, ישוע. בוא נשאיר, אתה היית. אתה היית מבראשית עם האלוהים, הכל נהיה על ידך. בך היו חיים, ואור לבני אדם, חסד ואמת. אתה היית. היית בראשית עם האלוהים, הכל נהיה על ידך. לך היו חיים, ואור לבני אדם, חסד ואמת. הרי הכל, בוא נכריז. הרי הכל ממך. כל דרכך והכל אליך. הרי הכל ממך, הכל דרכך והכל אליך. הגיבור של הסיפור, הדמות המרכזית הדמות המרכזית, העולם סובב סביבך, לא סביבי, אהיה המרכז. לך יש את החבר, אלוהים בורא עולם. התקדל והתקדל השם מעל כל שם התברך והשתבח השם מעל כל שם ישוע התקדל התקדש, 
E eu amava em nascer E falar Vem estampar A chamear Com o cheiro Bona Cris, e de gadar Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Brothers and sisters. It's so good to be here. So good to be together. To be together in the house of God. In the history of humanity, that we always have important occasions. Things that, uh, that affected the history of the human race. For example, First World War. The Second World War, the, the existence of the State of Israel, the independence of Israel, and we can even think about this horrible occasion on the 7th of October, being for events that affected the history. And one of those, one of the most important occasions, we celebrated uh, five days ago. Millions of people around the world celebrated Christmas, celebrated the birth of Jesus. Uh, 2,000 years ago. The promised Christ finally came. Prophecies uh, came to me. When the time was full, God sent his son, born of a woman and under the law. So Jesus was born. And we celebrated five days ago. But the question is, what left after the celebration? 
how many people still think about Jesus? We sing right now a few songs. And we said, the world turned around you. The world is focused around Christ. Everything is from you and through you. Through you. And everything is to you and for you. We're speaking about the Christ. But brothers and sisters, what left after the celebration? What are all those millions of people thinking about? We want to think about one person whose name is Simeon. And an event that happened eight days after the birth of Jesus. Who said that the birth of Jesus affected his life in a great way? He had a few special characteristics. And it needs to be our characteristic as well. We need to learn from him. So let's open Luke 2. Luke 2, verses 25. Luke 2, 25. Till 32. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the faith of all people, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. So, the name of the sermon is the example, uh, example for those who live in the last days. So we have five points today. One, the time in which Simeon lived. Two, his reputation, who he was. Three, his expectation. And four, the origin of his expectation. The origin of his hope. What, what it's based upon. And five, uh, what he wanted to say. So first of all, what time would he live in it? We see we see that Simeon lived in the Empire of Rome. It was a welcome country. It had a lot of uh, social justice. It was relative peace. It was the time of the Pax Romana. There was no great war in the Empire. And he lived in this time. But there was one nation who didn't feel at home. As well as Simeon. Simeon did not feel at home in the Roman Empire. Simeon 
We see that some people, some kings, were ruling in Israel. Uh, Holland, uh, Augustus, not David. It was foreign kings, someone else. It was not Jewish that ruled Israel. And King Hordus, he didn't, he didn't want uh, to bring Israel back to his land bring Israel to its God. The, the people of Israel were part of the Roman Empire, but they didn't belong there. Uh, so he was awaiting David. The king of David. God promised the king, a, pro, a king of the people of Israel from the root of David. And it's easy to think about uh, our times as well. We also live in a world, in a, in a society with a lot of progress. A huge technological advantage. But in the 7th of October, we suddenly experienced, we saw that we still don't live in paradise. We still live in this earth. We are the citizens of Israel, of the state of Israel. Or maybe we think uh, part of this world. We're the citizens of the world. But the question is, are we feel at home? Do we feel at home on this world? Simeon did not feel at home. <coughs> the people of Israel did not feel at home in the Roman Empire. And today, we Christians in this world, but we're not from this world. We're foreigners here. We are only live here temporary. We were settlers. We're on the way to our home. What people thought about Simeon? In verse 25, it said that he was just and devout. He was a just and devout man. <laughs> Many people lived uh, as part of the Roman Empire, and they were not just a devout, but Simeon was. He was a just man, a devout man, a godly man. Do you think people say this about you? Are we we're living inside a crooked and broken generation? The world has different laws, but we need to be different from the world. We love God, and this is why our behavior, we need to live in a different way. Are my actions in my job reflect the fact that I love God? In my marriage, in your marriage, are they reflecting the fact that you love God? How I use my money, is my money also reflect the fact? I read in the newspaper an article about seven ways, seven ordinary ways, in Israel, 
how uh, people uh, don't pay taxes in Israel. What are the seven common ways not to pay taxes? And it's like an instruction. How can you also not pay taxes in Israel? Horrible. But Jesus said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. We need to act differently. We need to live in a different way. And Simon lived in such a way that he was different from anyone else. He was just and devout. But uh, be careful, brothers and sisters, I need to warn you. Red warning light. Because Simeon was not just in the world, because he did good deeds, because he behaved well. No, 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 he was just in the world because he believed in God. It also said about uh, Abraham. Abraham believed in the Lord, and the Lord accounted this to him as righteousness. First of all, faith, and later, good deeds. Our good deeds follow our faith. How can we be just before God? It said that after we justified it by faith, now we have peace with God, thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ in Romans 5. First of all, faith. Faith in God and faith in Jesus. This is what makes us just, righteous. And uh, devout. As a result from our faith, we also act in a just way. So our third point, Simeon's expectation we know that he was uh, old, he was righteous, and he was different from anyone else because he had a different expectation. We read that there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was just in the boat, waiting for the consolation of Israel. He expected, he was waiting for a change. And especially uh, a change in the situation of Israel. Millions of people celebrated Christmas five days ago. But many of them forgot completely that the address, the first people who was who was supposed to receive no, this okay. message was the Jews, not the Gentiles. No, 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 no. Not me, no, a Gentile no, no, no. from Holland. No, no, no. The first person, no, no. the first audience of this gospel was the Jews. This good news were meant, first of all, to Jerusalem, to the Jewish people. In the same chapter, in verse 48, it said about uh, Anna, the widow, in verse 48, it said that she spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Hannah, she was also waiting. She was full of hope for the, the redemption of Jerusalem. Simeon was waiting. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. He was full of hope, full of expectation that one day God will intervene in the situation of his people. And it's important that we can ask ourselves what is our expectation? 
There seems that the next day something will change. Or maybe people who heard him, people in the temple that heard his word, they say nothing changed. No, what are you speaking about? Everything stayed the same. It's just like it was from the beginning of the creation. <coughs> Ups and downs in history, sometimes good, something bad. Some people say that nothing changed from the coming of the Messiah. Are we like this as well? Are we also waiting for a change like Simeon was? We have a verse that says that the, uh, the creation is suffering and waiting, waiting for Jesus. Even when we think about Israel and the nation of Israel, we have a lot of problems, let's face it. Internal problems, external problems, many antisemitism, a lot of problems. But we know that the prophecies are going to be fulfilled. The prophecies in the Bible. And we know that Simeon has expectation one day, God will fix it, he will intervene. <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters, we have hope. We have hope for Israel as well. Even despite all the trouble, through all the hardship, even through the, the trouble of Jacob, this horrible time, we know that God will accomplish his plan for Israel and for the nation of Israel. So Simeon had expectation. But what was his expectation based upon? What was the source of his hope? It was not a dream. It was not uh, uh, a dream he had on Christmas. We read about few things in this verse. In verse 25, it said that the Holy Spirit was upon him. The Holy Spirit was upon him. In verse 26, we read, by the Holy Spirit, it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. And in verse 28, it also said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. So the base was the word of God, the Holy Spirit, and the revelation from God. So this is the source of his expectation. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we had the greatest revelation in the Word of God. The Word of God is a revelation of God. It said that prophecy was never uh, gone out by the will of man, but the Holy Spirit moved person to speak for God. It's the revelation of God. And the Holy Spirit uses this book, he uses scripture to give us revelation of God. <laughs> In this book we read about creation, about the fall, about the first sin. In this book we read about humanity, about society about our crooked and corrupted nature. But in the very same book, in the same revelation, <laughs> we also read about all the promises of God, all the promises of God to Israel. We read about change, about how God is going to fix this world. If you don't want to know the future, if you don't care, just close the book. Don't read the Bible.
ik ga wat zien, ik ga wat zeggen, dan zie If you want to stay oblivious and just live your life, you can close the book. But brothers and sisters, it's so important to open it and read it. So we can read all the promises of God, all the wonderful promises. Let's get strength, let's uh, be encouraged by them through the word of God. And to our last one, what was uh, Simeon's message? What was he saying? What or who? God uses people to accomplish his plan. So, um, what did God use to fix this world, to renew this world? So in this time, uh, this was relatively peaceful for Israel. And I want to understand what is God's secret, how God is planning to do it. How God will restore the world and restore Israel. Many people think it's just to be a negotiation. We just need to speak to our enemies. But brothers and sisters, we cannot appreciate enough how much our soldiers are doing for us and what they will do for us. Even today, right now in this war, we cannot appreciate them enough. Many of them are ready to give their life, to sacrifice their life for for the state of Israel. We appreciate every single soldier in the, in the army, in the air forces, everyone who is ready to sacrifice his life for the state of Israel. But brothers and sisters, who is our expectation and Simeon's expectation, verse 28, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, This is the solution. This is God's solution. It's all about this little child, Jesus Christ, who was born in Bethlehem. This is the secret of Christmas. God, the Creator, came to this earth, came through Jesus, in this, to this very land. It's true that it happened 2,000 years ago. God, the Creator, came to His creation in Jesus Christ. He came to this very land. He came to this world. To this lost, sinful world. Full of guilt. This little child, Jesus Christ. Simeon took this little child in his arms. And in verse 30 it said, uh, Simon begins to pray, to worship Jesus. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared. Dear brothers and sisters, Jesus, this little child who was born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, is the solution to all of our problems. And first of all, the problem of sin, sin that separated us from God. Jesus came 
Kumar Graham. Kumar Dima. Let's look at his child. Just like Simon did. Simon blessed his child. And he said a few things about Jesus. First of all, in verse 31, the salvation which you have prepared before the face of all people, all people, all nations, which means Jews and Gentiles, everyone needs help, everyone needs assistance, because everyone have all have seen and they lack the glory of God. But Jesus' uh, word is it's meant for everyone, for all the nations, for all people, Jews and Gentiles. And it's interesting. In verse 22, in verse 32, it said, A light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. So now I just turn to the Gentiles here, to the gentle here. What was our situation before Christ? Before we know Jesus Christ. How can I sum it up in simple words? Darkness. Paul said in Ephesians, it says that the Gentiles were without Christ, foreigners to the people of Israel. We have no covenant with God. We were hopeless without God in the world. We were bankrupt, morally bankrupt. We had no God, no Christ, no covenant, no light. But one day, the light of God shone upon us. It entered our life. And we think we shone from John 1. The light shone, uh, shine in the darkness of our life. And now we have light. Life full of hope. Because we have received this light. But it's also said that Jesus is the glory of your people Israel. And now I speak to the Jews in this crowd. Uh, God has a covenant with Israel. God gave uh, the Jews special rights. He chose Israel. He chose you to be his people. In Romans, Paul said that uh, the Jews, that they have the Father, the glory, the covenant, uh, the law, the promises, and they also had the fathers. Now you know our street names are is the father, Havot. So in Holland or in other in other countries, they can't have the street of Havot. They don't have the father. Uh, my fathers in Holland, they probably worship trees or they were idol worshippers. But the Jewish people, they had the fathers. But what's most important, in Romans 9, verse 5, Paul said that according to the flesh, Christ came. Christ came. No. To the people of Israel, to the Jews. God can ask, who is your glory? What is the source of your glory as Israel? 
Fala com voz. Baixe até a cidade. Come on. The behavior of Israel as a nation and still behave as a nation, they reject him. But who is your glory? Who is the glory of the people of Israel? Simeon said in verse 42 that this child is the glory of the people of Israel. This child. He is the light for the Gentiles and the glory of the people of Israel. And in verse 44, Simeon said, he said to Mary, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken against a sign or a, an obstacle because the gospel is sharp, there is no in-between, light or darkness, heaven or hell, eternal life or eternal death. This is why in the 35 said to Mary, a sword will pierce through your own soul also. Jesus, this child, is also going to be crucified. But through his death, he brought us the good news, the gospel. And finally, what was, uh, how, what was the effect on the life of Simeon now that he saw Christ, how it affected Simeon's life? So it affected his uh, lifetime, lifespan. We know that he was old and he didn't left much time. In verse uh, 36, uh, 26, and probably, he, she probably was very old, and he didn't have much time to live. But in 29, he said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace, according to your word. Now I can depart in peace, I can die in peace. I am ready to die. And he speaks about his own death. Now I have saw him. I saw the salvation of Israel. And now I'm ready to die in peace. He is not dead yet, but he is ready. And this is also what Paul said to live is Christ and to die is gain. We, we all we wish each other a long life, full of years, <laughs> but eventually our life on this earth will come to an end. Sooner or later, to live is Christ and to die is gain. I'm not very excited about dying. I guess you also don't want to die. I hope we want to live. But the question is, are we ready for death? To see God, to meet with God face to face, to see Jesus? Is, he, is Jesus alive in us? Do we know him? Because when you know him, you'll have eternal life and nothing can separate him from us. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ and the love of God. No power, no principalities. 
and not even deaf. Even deaf will not separate us. So let's learn from the example of Simeon. He lived in a, during the empire of Rome, during the time of welfare, wealth, and riches, but he didn't feel at home. We also live on this earth, in this world, but don't you dare feel at home. Please, don't feel yourself at home. We're waiting for something else, for something better. And we know that Simran was righteous. He had holy life. And we should do it as well. We should also live righteous and holy life. Life that show, that show people the word of God. We know that Simeon had an expectation. Expectation for the people of Israel. God was uh, fulfilling his plan for Israel and for the land of Israel. And we also should live in this expectation. We should believe that. We should believe that people did not left the God of Israel. He will fulfill his plan for Israel. So Simeon received a message from God, from heaven, through the word of God and through the Holy Spirit. What we have in our hands is the word of God. We have the revelation of God. We have this book. It's like an anchor in our life. We, uh, we base our life on the word of God. And we know that God will accomplish his plan. When Christ came, we know that Christ came as a little child, as a baby, 2,000 years ago. And we also wait Christ, we wait for Christ. But this time we're not waiting for a baby or a suffering servant. This time we're waiting a king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. It said that our citizenship is in heaven. We're the citizens of heaven. And from there will come our Christ, to whom we're waiting for, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will exchange our lowly body, and he will make our body look similar to his, full of glory. We are waiting for Jesus. And in Hebrew it said that even Christ, after he was sacrificed one time, 2,000 years ago, and he uh, took away our sin, he will come again. He will come a second time. <laughs> this time, not for, uh, not to take away our sin, but he will come as Lord. So now we have to wait for him. We're waiting for the Son of God to come from the heavens. The Son that was raised up from the day who saved us from the wrath of God. Brothers and sisters, Jesus came. He already came 2,000 years ago. And he came to give away his life for us. But one day, he will come back. And not to die again, 
He will not give away his body or blood again, but he will come to reign as a king. What a difference, what a change. Yes, 2,000 years ago, it was a huge change. And it's also a change in our life. The birth of Christ changed our life as well. But it's nothing compared to the change that will happen when he will come again. When a new morning, the new dawn uh, finally came, a new era, a new time, what a day. One day this little child is going to sit in Jerusalem on a throne and his kingdom will, uh, will finally reign in Jerusalem. He is the king of all nations, he is the hope of all nations and the hope of Israel. We know he will come soon. And then we won't need any more armies, no, uh, no missiles to put back there. No problem. No sin. Everything will finally be perfect. And we will meet Simeon there. Together with all Christians, with all believers. One day we will sit together in the, in the great wedding feast of the Lamb. And we think about it. We sing, we sing and we say that Jesus is the center of it all, in the center. And do we believe it with all our hearts? Is Jesus really the center of our life? How rich was Simeon? How rich are we? Because we know Jesus Christ. And this is why we can say it with Paul. We can say Maranatha. We say the Spirit and the Bride said, Come. And the one who hears said, Come. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. So let's stand and receive the blessing. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your Son. But the so many people were waiting for him. That an angel told about his birth, that a virgin gave birth to him. And then finally, everyone around the world knew about him. And the angel, the seraphs, worship him. And we're going to join them and we're going to declare you. We're going to worship you with all the angels now. For you are a merciful God. You are our Father, our King. Thank you. Thank you that you gave your Son to this world to free us from sin to free us from the fear of death, to give us eternal life. Father, please uh, purify us. Make us perfect for your son. So we won't be ashamed when he will come back. Dear Jesus, how can we thank you enough? We know you, we declare that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords, the Shepherd of Israel. 
the little David, uh, the flag of the nation, the king of David, the star of the morning star, the star of righteousness, king of all nations, the head of creation, wonderful counselor, God Almighty, a prince of peace, Emmanuel. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So now we're uh, beginning the new year. And we know that under him we have healing, there is security. We have shelter, protection under your wings. May the sun of righteousness will shine upon you. May Jesus Christ will shine upon you. May he cast away all the darkness from your life. Let us be ready to meet him when he is sitting in his glory on his throne. Uh, receive now and uh, always have the blessings of God, the blessing of God, the Son, and God the Father, and God the Spirit. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The grace peace in the name of Jesus and have a good year. שיעור עוד הפעם, גדול אלוהיי. גדול אלוהיי, שירו כי גדול אלוהיי, וכל אחד Thank you. 
בוא נשאיר את זה עוד הפעם, ישר לאלוהים. גדול אלוה אתה גדול, שיר כי גדול וכל אחד יראה כי גדול אבא, אנחנו מודים לך, אדון. כמה גדול אתה, אדון, כמה נפלא אתה. תודה לך, אדון, תודה לך, שהאלוהים שלנו הוא מעל כל אלוהים, אין אלוהים אחר. ולא היה ולא יהיה, אדון. אתה, יהובה, אלוהי ישראל, אתה האלוהים שלנו. אנחנו מודים לך על הבוקר הנפלא הזה, אדון, בנוכחות שלך.